In this course, you'll learn how to make 10k a month by using properties that you don't own and without spending a single penny of your own through the power of deal selling. I'm Lena and since graduating in 2018, I went on to work a number of 9 to 5s which I absolutely hated. And that's when I decided to venture out into property in order to become financially free, but I had no startup capital. And that's when I discovered deal selling, where I made 10k a month, pure profit, simply by capitalising on my skills. Before we learn what deal selling is, let's first get to know what a deal is. A deal refers to a property, so why not call it a property? Well, you'll get to understand that as you learn the process. So a deal seller's job is to source slash find properties. The deal seller will go out to landlords and letting agents and try and get properties on a rent to rent basis. Rent to rent is when you rent off the landlord and then you rent it out again as a company to tenants or guests. And because you're renting out the property as a company, it's called a company let. So once the deal seller has found a property that is suitable for a company let, they will then advertise this property as a deal to existing Airbnb hosts and HMO operators. HMO just means housing multiple occupants, which is basically like a house share. As Airbnb hosts and HMO operators will constantly be looking for properties so that they can scale their portfolio. And the deal seller gets paid a fee for their services once they take on the properties. So another thing to know is that your clients, the Airbnb hosts and the HMO operators are usually called investors. And an average fee that they pay for a deal can be anywhere from 1K to 5K. And that's for a singular property. Now, some people say as a deal seller, you don't really need to set up a limited company in the beginning and just continue as a sole trader. But personally, I would just do it as it makes things so much easier down the line and it only costs £12 on gov.uk to register. Make sure to add the correct SIP codes as this is what classifies your business. Once you register as a company, you will get a company's house number and with this number, you can go off and create a business bank account. So you can use a personal bank account, but just for separation, I would just use a business bank account. First you need to register with the PRS, the Property Reader Scheme. This is the intermediary and you're basically signing up with them so that they recognise you as a property company and this costs around £179. Next is the ICO, so this is the Information Commissioner's Office and this is purely for data protection and this costs around £40 to register. The PRS and the ICO are compulsory so I would definitely get on that as soon as you can as you could be fined. Next is professional indemnity insurance. Now this is really important to have because when you're a deal seller, you are profiting off your services. And professional indemnity insurance is there to protect you in case you ever get sued for negligent services. And you can also sign up with anti-money laundering, which is on gov.uk. Money laundering is when you disguise the origins of your money. So that's why it's recommended to sign up with anti-money laundering so that you're being transparent with your earnings. So why is there a need for deal sellers? If Airbnb hosts and HMO operators are already successful, why can't they just do it again rather than pay someone else to do it? Well, there's a number of reasons. The biggest being convenience and time. It's incredibly time consuming to source a property as not all landlords and letting agents are receptive to a company let. You could be calling 40 agents a day and then maybe walk away with one or two warm leads not even yeses. And there's viewings which can happen at any time of the day. You make the journey there and then you realise that the property is not in great condition so you've wasted time. And then it's on to the next viewing which equally could not work out as well. So that is why they purchase deals because it takes all of the groundwork out. And for deal sellers this is great because it is a 100% profit margin, there are no startup costs and all you need is a phone. So when you're a deal seller, you don't need to necessarily stick to a certain area that's close by to you. As like I mentioned before, you can simply work on your phone by calling landlords or calling letting agents. You can aim for towns, you can aim for cities, you can aim for um, the countryside, as long as you know that there's a market there. Otherwise, there's no point putting all your energy and effort into sourcing properties in areas that Airbnb hosts and HMO operators don't want. So a good sign if it's usually nearby attractions, hospitals, shopping malls, transport links, and the list goes on. The good thing about being a deal seller is that you're flexible. If you find a property that is a three hour drive away, then at most you'd only need to go there once for the viewing. And then once an Airbnb host or a HMO operator takes on that deal, then you won't ever need to visit it again. So when it comes to searching deals, um, you can do this through Rightmove or you can do it through Gumtree. Now Rightmove will have letting agents and Gumtree will have landlords. You can definitely search through both. I mean, the good thing about being a deal seller is that you have no limitations. A lot of people tend to opt for landlords when the paperwork is against them. 
But as a deal seller, you have no limitations because you're working with a plethora of investors who are all at different stages in their businesses. So because of that, I'm not going to really do any filters. I'm just going to find a property within, let's say, Manchester city centre. And I'm going to take a look at, you know, apartments and houses. Like I mentioned, there is no limitations. But I want to make sure that I'm finding properties that there'll definitely be a market for. So, for example, with this apartment in city centre, I know that there's going to be a market for this. It is fully refurbished. There's a balcony, huge window. And if we go down to the location, we can see it's not too far away from a train station. And if we zoom in a bit further, we can see that it's close to a hospital, a main road. So this will definitely sell. So because we're pretty sure that this will be a really good deal, the next thing to do will be obviously to stack it with the rent here. Or if you want to just call the agent straight away, you can definitely do that. But if you are calling the agent, make sure you're keeping track. Any leads you call, keep them in a tracker. I mean, if you've ever worked in sales, you know that whenever you call up leads, you put it in a CRM base. So that is a customer relationship management database. And this is the same thing. Although letting agents and landlords are not clients, they are still leads. That's why you need to keep on top of them. Make sure you put on the agent, the link to the property. So you're not calling about the same property twice without even knowing. And of course, how the conversation went, whether it was warm, whether it was cold or whether it was like a really hot lead. So pitching to landlords and letting agents, you're not just trying to find a one off deal. You're trying to get close to letting agents. You're trying to get close to landlords so that you have constant deals filling your pipeline. A lot of landlords and letting agents are not receptive to company let purely because they just don't know enough about it. And people don't like what they don't know. So when you're calling landlords and calling letting agents, inquire as a normal tenant first. Be eager about the property. Ask about certain features. Does it come with the white goods at all? Does it not? Does it come with parking? The aim of this call is to book a viewing. And before you book a viewing, you want to be transparent saying that, yes, by the way, I am looking as a company and I work with other companies that will be occupying this property. Um, I personally won't be occupying it, but I can go through all the details much better in person. So that is your aim, to book a viewing. So if they do say yes, and they do want to book a viewing, don't book it straight away, because you need to find an investor first. So you can just be like, I'll come back to you with a date and time. But obviously don't keep them waiting because the property is not exclusive to you and it can be snatched up by someone else. Now, obviously you may get pitch pushback where the landlord and letting agent are asking, what's the company let? Who's gonna be staying at the property? How do I know my property isn't going to get trashed? And that is basically where you're going to be mentioning that as a company, you're professional. Nobody who'll be staying at that property will be damaging the property. There will be security measures there. And the company that's staying at the property will be providing upkeep through regular housekeeping. And then always lead the conversation back to, but I can provide more details at the viewing. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to overpromise something. You want to wait until the investor is also at the viewing with you or you've set up a viewing between the investor and the landlord or slash letting agent so that the investor can pitch themselves on exactly how they'll be occupying the property. So this is how you essentially stack a deal. Now, this is designed for a serviced accommodation deal, otherwise known as an Airbnb deal. For a HMO, there'd be very slight differences, but I'll go into that in a bit. So in order to stack an SA deal, the most important thing is finding out an accurate ADR. So an ADR stands for average daily rate. And this is basically your nightly premium. Now you can figure out what a good ADR is by simply going on AirDNA, which is an Airbnb metrics website, and then looking around in the area for similar properties to your deal, and then adding all those ADRs up and getting the average. Now I've based these numbers not on any specific property. This is just for you to understand how it works. So I've done an ADR of £120, so let's say that was the average ADR that I found from an area that I was already looking at. And then this is the rent on Rightmove. So what I've done here, as you can see, is that I've done it for every type of occupancy. Because at the end of the day, you want to be really transparent with the investor and they want to know exactly how it's performing at each occupancy. And the most important of all is that it has to break even at 50% occupancy, which you can see here that it does as total net profit is £8.50. So this is pretty simple, it's just simple profit and loss, but essentially all your outgoings would be your rent, your bills, your council tax, your Wi-Fi, your TV license, and your OTA fees. So this is the commission that Booking.com and Airbnb takes, and that's usually at 15%. So this £270 is 15% of the revenue. So that's the ADR times the amount of days at per occupancy. So 50% occupancy 
in a month is obviously 15 days. So that is why the revenue totals up to this much. Now, most SA investors will look at this one because this is usually the middle of the road baseline to understand how well on average the SA will perform, which as you can see, performs pretty well at total net profit being £600. Now, if you were stacking a HMO, you wouldn't really have ADR. Instead, you would have the average rent per room. And instead of occupancy, like the number of days, instead, you would have the number of rooms in the property. But unlike SA, you wouldn't need multiple tables. You would only need one table because net profit is based on a stable factor, like the number of rooms in the property, which will never change. Unlike occupancy, which is subject to change, uh, due to marketing, seasonality, and many more things. So when it comes to selling deals, you can do this various ways. Now, one of the key things about being a deal seller is that you really need to grow your network. This is extremely pivotal. You need to know other deal sellers in case you ever want to co-source in the future. I'll explain what co-sourcing is in a little bit. You need to get to know Airbnb hosts and HMO operators to add to your investor list. And you also need to network with landlords and letting agents for your leads. So when you are selling the property deal, you need to utilize contacts that you've gained through networking events. The second way is using Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups. Now you can join WhatsApp groups through networking. And then Facebook groups are fairly easy to find. You just go on Facebook, you type in rent to rent deals or property deals and join all of those groups. So then you can advertise your deals there. And the last two ways to do it is for using your social media and having a investor mailing list. As a deal seller, you will need to build on your brand, create a social media page, advertise your deals, and then from there also build your investor list. I'll put on the screen of an example of how I advertise deals. You basically want to list the key characteristics of the property. Also, when you're sourcing properties, you have to take into account certain factors. For example, if the property is located in a really good hotspot like Canary Wharf, you can sell that deal for a higher fee around 4 to 5k. Or say, for example, if a property comes fully furnished from the previous tenant, you can also sell this at a higher fee for around 4k. The average is usually 3k for just like a normal property deal to sell at. Whilst a lot of new deal sellers will actually sell their deals at a reduced cost of around 1500. Just to kind of get their business off the ground and build an investor base. So a DD pack, this is a due diligence pack. And sometimes the DD pack will have the exact address of the deal and sometimes it won't. This is just down to how you operate. The whole reason why you have to be protective over where the address is of the deal is so that your investor doesn't bypass you and go to the source directly when you've taken time to find and source this deal. But either way, regardless of whether the investor has paid the fee or not, the DD pack usually always comes after the NDA and terms and conditions are signed. This is a DD pack that I've used um, a while back uh, in regards to a deal I was selling. And each pack of mine will always have the basics included. So essentially it'll have pictures of the property. It'll also have details on what's in the area, how close it is to the local amenities, how close it is to transport links. And it'll also have some examples of other Airbnbs in the area so people can take a look at how well it performs as well as get a better idea of the ADR that they can charge. And another thing it'll also include will be obviously the stacking. So say for example, um, you advertise the deal and there are investors interested, then you will basically get them to sign an NDA and terms and conditions. This is there so that they do not go behind your back and deal with the landlord or letting agent directly and avoid paying you a finder's fee. Once they sign that, you can send them the DD pack. And if everything looks good to them, then you will then book in a viewing. You want to make sure that you are working with serious investors, companies that know what they're doing and will take on the property with due care. Now you can choose to take the fee at this point before the viewing, or you can choose to do it after the viewing once they've confirmed that they're happy with the property. This totally depends on how you operate as the investor at the end of the day will have 14 days to essentially go back on their decision. So in order to avoid all this back and forth, you can always take it at the end of the viewing. But if you want to be safe and take the money beforehand, then just go ahead and do that before the viewing. So at the viewing, this is when you essentially close in on the deal as the viewing is really the last stage of this entire process. Now, bearing in mind, um, deals 
turn over really quickly from finding a letting agent and landlord that is receptive to advertising the deal to finding an investor and to booking the viewing this all can happen within the space of 24 hours deals move quickly so the viewing is the last leg of that so if the viewing goes well and the investor is happy to go forward with the property then all you need to do is let the letting agent and landlord know and say from this point onwards, you'll now be dealing directly with so-and-so, but let's keep in touch. Then your role is over and you would have gotten paid your fee and then you can start working on the next deal. However, some deals don't really go that smoothly. Sometimes you might have trouble finding an investor that is interested. In that case, then you'll reach out to some other deal sellers and see if they have any investors that might be interested. And what you will do with the other deal seller is essentially be co-sourcing with them and you're going to be splitting the fee because they will find the investor and you have the deal. The best way that I've seen through finding investors is literally through word of mouth, through passing contacts along. So you want to make sure that you're providing deals that are of high quality so that investors are really happy about this. If you can, try and get reviews and testimonials from every investor you sell a deal to that are really happy. That way you can put this on your social media and have a more trusted brand. Now honestly, you can be financially free by literally selling only one deal a month, which is on average 3K and probably won't take the entire month for you to sell that deal. But sometimes as you're growing your network, you're growing your investor base, you're growing your leads, you might be selling four, five, six, 10 deals, earning 10 to 20K a month. And in that instance, you wanna be able to scale. I would start hiring staff to start actually doing the calling and pitching for you so that that way you can focus on the selling side, selling to investors. And that was a very concise run through of deal selling. Hopefully it was helpful. And if it was, I do have a course on how to start a service accommodation slash Airbnb business.